Hello friends, Fedosevich here. In this video, I'm going to be talking about where the Angoro class legendary cards from Hearthstone exist or do not exist in WoW. And that whole not existing part is what got me thinking about this topic to begin with. Now that we've spent about a month with the Angoro expansion, I'm realizing that I don't recognize nearly as many cards as I would have expected having played through the original Angoro zone. So we're going to go through each of these cards one at a time to find out where they're from or maybe where they aren't from in WoW. First up is the Druid Legendary Tarantus, who I actually recognized. This level 70 non-elite mob introduced during the Burning Crusade expansion was missed by many players and for good reason. He spawns in the northernmost dome in Area 52 and drops nothing more than grey vendor trash and meat for cooking. Now he was killed and farmed by some players looking to work their way through their Netherwing rep to get the much sought after Netherwing mount, which at the time was the first cool looking dragon mount that was easily accessible to players. So while this dinosaur may not have existed in the Angoro zone, it does fit in with the overall dinosaur theme, and it was a minion that many players will remember from their days in WoW. Next up is the Shaman class legendary, Kalamos, Primal Lord. This is one of the Angoro cards that does not exist in WoW and is unique to Hearthstone. This card was introduced to us by Eddie Malone when he observed Kalamos when he was on top of Fire Plume Ridge, where we are now. Despite this being a Hearthstone unique minion, I appreciate the choice of location. Fireplume Ridge is home to living Blaze Fire Elementals and the Blaze Runner himself. This was and still is a place where almost all players will end up questing at some point in the Angoro Zone. And very likely to some level of frustration. Does anyone want to go ahead and find the hottest spot on this volcano? Well if you know what I'm talking about, I'm pretty sure you don't. So even though we haven't seen Kalamos in WoW, this is one class legendary that fits very nicely with the overall theme of the zone. Moving on, we get the warrior class legendary, King Mosh, who used to be a feared elite mob in the Angoro zone. He was a rare spawn that would be able to take out fully geared level 60 players and wasn't able to be soloed until the level cap was raised to 70 in the Burning Crusade. This was the original surprise death in the Angoro zone if this guy walked up behind you. This idea of zone elites was taken up a notch with the Fell Reaver from Burning Crusade, but King Mosh did it first. Moving on, we get the warrior class legendary King Mosh. He was a feared elite mob in the Angoro zone who'd be able to take out fully geared level 60 players. He wasn't able to be soloed until the level cap was raised to 70 in BC. This was the original surprise death in the Angoro zone if this guy walked up behind you. The idea of zone elites was taken up a notch with a fell reaver in Burning Crusade, but King Mosh did it first. King Mosh is such a rare spawn that I'm now showing a new Devil Soar with a similar orange skin that is now level 110 to ensure the continued deaths of players of all levels. This orange skin is what originally made King Mosh so highly coveted by hunters who wanted a rare pet. This is another great mob that we see make it into Hearthstone's Ungoro expansion as the King terrorized many players simply wanting to quest throughout this zone. It's okay. Next up is the Warlock Legendary Clutch Mother Zavis, a rare spawn which is found in the Angoro Zone in the Slithering Scar. Many quests will send players into the cave with the Clutch Mother, and this was a minion that I'm sure a lot of WoW players have seen despite being on a timer. She had a decent loot table filled with greens, but had a nasty ability to lay Gorishi eggs which summon larvae capable of taking out unsuspecting players. Now the Clutch Mother and the Larvae used to be tameable minions, but that was removed in patch 5.0. There never was anything really linking the Clutch Mother to any sort of Warlock quests that I'm aware of, but it is great to see such a rare minion make it in as a class legendary. Next, we'll be talking about the Rogue Legendary Sherazan, Corpse Flower. This is another rare WoW minion which only spawns during the Angoro Madness Micro Holiday. And since that is not going on right now, I'm just showing you a few of the plant minions that people are familiar with from Angoro, which happen to look at least similar to Sherazan. During the encounter, Sherazan can summon Crystal Vines as well as Burrow Underground and start blooming, which creates a wide AoE attack. I kind of feel like there is some sort of common connection between the Underground Burrowing and the Dormant mechanic. Because it is such a rarely spawning minion, there's not much else to work off of. And that rareness is actually something that I really like about this legendary. Not many players will have seen Sherazan, which makes its encounter a little more legendary. While allowing the more common Lashers, which is actually in the Threshers, which is what we're looking at now, to be a, a rogue card, which everyone who has been in Angoro will recognize. 
Next, we're moving on to the Paladin legendary Sunkeeper Terim. Terim is one of the Tolvir who journeyed from Uldum to make a home for themselves in the Ungoro Crater, and is another Hearthstone exclusive. Terim shares a title with Sunkeeper Krosis, a Tolvir who does appear in Ungoro in WoW during the Ungoro Madness Micro Holiday. Because we don't know much about Terim and the Micro Holiday is not going on, I am just showing the closest resemblance to Krosis that I can find. An oath sworn captain in the lost city of Tolvir 5 man dungeon. It's unfortunate that so little is known about Terim, since he along with Lyra are two of my favorite new cards, and neither of them exist in WoW. Last but certainly not least is the hunter legendary Swamp King Dread, or simply King Dread as he is known in WoW. Dread is an optional boss in the Drakthron Keep 5-man dungeon, and can also be tamed. At this point in WoW, we know that there were other accessible orange skin dinosaurs, but the prestige of having a dungeon boss as your pet was more than enough for some players to take on the challenge of taming a boss. This boss had the exciting ability to AoE fear your group, which would often result in pulling extra mobs, these green and dark blue devil sores you can see Dread walking through. Towards the end of the Wrath expansion, those extra adds weren't a problem, but I remember early on in the expansion, groups would wipe because of them. While Dread certainly is not from Ungoro, he fits the dinosaur theme and certainly was a memorable encounter for anyone who had the opportunity to do it while the mechanics still mattered. Okay. So that's going to be it for this video. Just a brief introduction and explanation about the class legendaries from the Ungoro expansion and their place in WoW. While I love the actual mechanics introduced in the Ungoro expansion, when I first heard about it, I fully thought it would revolve more around the crystals that are found throughout the zone and less about the elementals. I also think that ignoring some pre-cataclysm things in Angoro was kind of silly. Blizzard could have had one Angoro expansion focus on the exploration camps at Marshall's Refuge, and then five years from now, another Angoro expansion focus on post-cataclysm with things going on at Marshall's Stand. Also, the fact that there was no reference to AME01 had to be a bit of an oversight, right? Just my two cents. Either way, I love the Angoro expansion. Having gone through this process gave me a better appreciation for some of the less known cards. I'm not sure if I'll go through the class quests or neutral legendaries, but I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time. Keep your stick on the ice.